Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in. So glad to be here with you today. So glad you're there. Is this your first time to see this program? Welcome. And to all those regular people, I hear from you regularly. I just want you to know you're appreciated. We're all workers together for Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? That's a great, great privilege. And it's a privilege for me to be here and it's a privilege to have you watching. Thank you very much. Got an interesting program today and an important program. And when I tell you what it's about, you might think, well, you know, that's really not anything in my life right now, but I really encourage you to listen to every word because I'm going to give you information that you might stumble across a situation or a person who needs what we're talking about today, and you will be able to direct them, and that's learning disabilities. I remember when that term uh, first kind of entered our vocabulary, and um, it was a very good thing because educational uh, systems finally recognized that uh, there were twists and turns in individuals that really uh, prevented them from learning as they should. But when they put the term disability on it, it I think they've changed that. But the idea is that we're not all cookie cutters and we learn differently and we might have things that slow us down in one area, but we can be picked up in another. And my guest today is Susan Eves and she has a, a workbook here uh, that she is really, uh, this probably should be in every church library, you know, overcoming uh, learning disabilities from a spiritual perspective. It's rich, it's good, I'm, I'm anxious for you to meet her and we'll kind of get in the weeds on that. She also wrote this, the I Am book. Well, she put a lot of work into this, I'll tell you. Uh, so I'm anxious for you to meet her and I encourage you to listen very carefully, even if you think the subject doesn't concern you. And I'm going to join Stephanie, something I'm excited about, because this is my kind of food and it's angel hair primavera and it's got every kind of vegetable in it you can imagine and we're just going to put that together and make you hungry and you can have the recipe if you would like to have it. Before I do uh, join her though I want to again offer you this personalities in love. If I were going to offer I'd just say personalities because this book can help you understand anybody in your family I believe, if my memory is correct, that these temperaments were kind of defined even before Christ. And that's, uh, there's four different types of temperaments that you're born with. And they all have strengths and they all have weaknesses. But Jesus came to make strengths out of your weaknesses, those natural weaknesses. And so I encourage you, this will help you, especially as a husband or a wife, or maybe in the workplace, your children, understanding them. Personalities in love for the amazing, wonderful price of $15. That's it. We'll take care of the shipping and handling, which is no small item these days. And if you'd like to use your credit card, it's 1-800-229-0059. Or that address is right there on your screen. Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And uh, these are going out the door uh, right now, today. And I hope that you'll take advantage of this. The Bible says, good understanding giveth favor. And it's important, important to always be learning and stretching and growing and getting educated. Is that not right? Stephen? That is so true. That's one nice thing about working here. Uh, people we meet like Susan mm -hmm. and Herman Show and all these shows around here bring in such great yeah, people. Yeah, you always have to be willing to learn mm -hmm. for sure. And you never need to stop. Now, okay. look at this color. Yeah, isn't it Doesn't beautiful? I don't know if it's every vegetable I could ever think of. Mm -hmm. but it's well, a lot. <laughs> well, it's close. It's close. Okay, so I have a red onion in here and I have some garlic that we've sauteed. And I have two zucchini here that we've chopped coarsely. Now this should cook just a little bit longer than we're gonna cook it, but because of our time restraints. Mm -hmm. But And you like your vegetables crunchy. You said, very so. crunchy. Uh, to me, this recipe says cook them 10 to 12 minutes. I probably wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and then I have a cup of carrots here that I've just... And we big. have made the angel hair pasta. Yes. And then you... And I'm gonna try the fluffy. Fresh it. corn. Uh-huh, I you, cut it myself. You cut it this morning, yummy. I love, love, love fresh corn. Yeah. We were trying to think of that recipe that 
we made not too long ago with fresh corn. You know, we I, <laughs> I look at so many recipes nowadays that I, I'm like, did I make that? Did mm -hmm. I think about making that? I can't remember, so. Oh, you know what happened to me this week? I was doing some interviews uh, with Dr. Clark. Everybody loves Dr. David Clark here. Great tomatoes. And the thunder was just, <gasps> oh, yes. oh. So you can only imagine what the lightning was. Yeah. Well, I go home and amazingly, my garage door opened. Mm -hmm. But nothing else worked. We and have had some wonderful storms I this week. I thought, Stephanie, we are so spoiled. Yes. I mean, it's panic because the light didn't turn on. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. It's really? It's so true. Like, what am I going to do? Yeah. And it gave me such a pause to thank the Lord to be in America. Mm -hmm. We are so used to these creature comforts. Shame on us. Yes, yes, I agree. So I called Duke Energy. Boy, they were on the ball. Yeah. They, they really were. They were out in less than two hours wow. to my house, you know. Wow. Several. And you weren't the only one who called, so. I'm sure. <laughs> Well, that's great. But I'm, it was just that momentary thought you like, spoiled. Like, I don't have air conditioning? <laughs> what? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, my Facebook page, my Facebook page, yes, yes, I'm up yes. to 171 likes, I'll have you know. Well, we want you to uh, go to Stephanie's uh, Facebook page. It's Stephanie's Fan Club. Because uh, she she's very thoughtful and she kind of keeps up with. Um, I so it's Stephanie O'Neill, right? It's Stephanie's fan club. Stephanie's fan club. Oh, there yep, it is. Yep, yep. Our director is yep, on there the ball. It is. You need to go there because this girl is a fountain of knowledge and wisdom well, for your life. Well, I don't life. know about that, but <laughs> just like me, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, but you, like you, do, said, you do kind of converse with them. And oh, yeah, sure. And especially if they need, if they want a recipe or something, I can get them right mm -hmm. away for them if they don't feel like emailing you. Or we talk about weddings and funerals. Mm -hmm. and uh, you've had both within, what, three a month, weeks? Yeah. Yep. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to, like I said, uh, yeah, this I can, think that's this can go enough for me. Yeah, for you, this is good. And I would, you can toss that, and then I'm going to put some um, oh, cheese on so it. Oh, pretty. Doesn't this look delicious? I know what Arthelene's gonna have for lunch today. I know what my boss is having for lunch. <laughs> then I don't have to go out and get it. He'll like this. Oh, he'll love, he eats anything, but he'll love this. It does need to be tossed a little bit because mm -hmm. you want to incorporate the... The oil and the garlic and the onions. Mm -hmm. oh, it smells really delicious in here. What a wonderful meal. Yeah, put some cheese over the top oh yes oh yeah let's just put it all yeah mm, it smells like a italian restaurant in here yeah <laughs> but i need to get some vegetables yeah get some veggies they all go to the bottom yep there you go yeah you need to do a nice lot of tossing on this. yeah okay girl and also you know everybody's unique think where they could go with this recipe oh you could use every vegetable that you could mm -hmm. think of for sure mm. Yummy. Oh, and it, that's crunchy. I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I like crunch. Mmm. That's delicious. Uh-huh. Here, just sit here and watch us eat mm. for a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, we're eating. We are very busy right mm -hmm. now. Listen, uh, mm. anybody who works, you can have that. You can have things chopped up. Mm-hmm. You can have your angel hair cooked. Just throw it throw all together. Throw it together as fast as we did. Yep, 10 minutes. You and you've dinner. got a very, very mm. nutritious meal. Yes. So if you want this recipe, information is coming up on your screen. We will be glad to send it to you, no cost. Most people get it by email, which mm -hmm. is fine. Mm -hmm. Or you can write to us. But I think you'll love this. It's Angel Primavera with vegetables, whatever. Stay with me. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. All right, I'm, I'm very thankful to welcome Susan Eves. We were just comparing notes and uh, you were on a show with me called Solo Act. Yes, I was. Probably more than 20 years ago. <laughs> oh, it's been a while. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I'm glad to see you and glad that you're bringing to the audience such an important subject. And first of all, I want to go through um, maybe the reason how, you know, how God uses everything yes, for does. his glory and his purpose, even bad things. Um, you were in a horrible accident. How long ago? Ten years ago, Arlene. Arthelene. And you, you still have the effects of it, although you've come a long, long way. I have. I'm a miracle in progress, but I am out of a wheelchair, which mm -hmm. I'd been in one for a long time, and my hands and feet were in claws. And God is so awesome and faithful. He has brought me back strong, but it's not over till I run again. Okay. And um, when you do, be sure and have a video camera there, please. I will. <laughs> uh, but <clears throat> you had stopped because of what... Uh, I stopped for an ambulance that was running a light, and the person behind me did not stop and came 21 inches into my back seat. So I was injured from head to toe. Yeah, I, it probably shook up every bone, every everything in your body. Do you know how fast they were going? The police guesstimated 60 without breaking. She well, was then going about you, 60. you're a miracle. I am a miracle, <clears throat> especially because it happened on the East Coast. We were pushed in six lanes of traffic on the opposite side of the road with traffic coming at us, and God so protected us. God bless you, man. Now, did that have anything to do with this? Well, it did because um, after the accident, I sustained a concussion, I had spinal cord injuries and neurological injuries, but I had been a speed reader my whole life, and after the accident, I woke up with a different brain. I could not focus, concentrate. I'd read a page and say, what did I just read? Reread it 10 times and couldn't comprehend. And I was crying out to God, what has happened to me? I, I have a different brain. And uh, the Lord, I had done learning disability workshops 25 years ago. My background is education. I have two degrees in education and work with remedial reading um, students. And the Lord challenged me to get that workshop back out for myself. And he took me through the paces, and my brain has come back. I'm not speed reading yet, but my concentration, my ability to speak, think, remember things has come back so strong because it's spiritual principles. And God's words are spirit, and they are life to whosoever will believe. Well, your brain's okay. <laughs> she wrote this book. Uh, but that gave you, I guess, a, an appreciation for people who can't focus for, for many, many reasons. In my lifetime, because I have eight great-grandchildren now. Wow. And um, those, ch those children, those kids with learning disabilities, it, it might have been dyslexia or multiple reasons, boy, they fell through the cracks. There, were, there, were, there was nothing, nothing for them. And uh, it's a great thing when this came around, but adding the spiritual dimension to it has to work because God's word is powerful. Yes, it is. Now, uh, you were straight A's until a family trauma, which That's was about correct. junior high? Junior high in seventh grade. I had been on the honor roll. It was so easy for me to make an A. And then a family member went through a very public court case. And it was on uh, television. And it was in the newspapers, headline news. And so every day, the whole school year, from September through about May or June, that court case went. And I never knew what I was facing in school. And my grades went from honor roll to C's, D's, and F's. And honestly, I was giving it 100%, but I couldn't think. And the reason I couldn't think is, I was afraid I was bullied very badly in school. Everybody had an opinion about this family member that was in the news all the time. And not a, not so And your favorable. parents never explained it to you. No, they did not it, explain it. There's a little it. lesson there too that a kid in junior high you you can you, you can probably explain quite a bit to them. Well, if your parent will tell you, they'll tell you in a lot more merciful, mm -hmm. compassionate, informative way. But I would find out in school or people would bring in newspaper articles about this family member. And so it was so traumatic and I couldn't understand why I was given 100% and yet not able to comprehend math, science, everything shut down. And so Today, I brought that, I became a teacher, to fast forward, I became a teacher, went into remedial reading, and one of the first students I had came to me, she was in third grade, chronologically, but she was not even testing out at a kindergarten level, which meant she didn't recognize half the letters of the alphabet. And 
you know, every day she'd cry. I was the specialty teacher working for the government, remedial reading specialist. Well, how do you teach a, a kid that cries every day? And upon dialoguing with her and gain, gaining her confidence, I found out this little girl had been abandoned over the Christmas holiday by her mom. And the mom just left her and her, daughter, her sister in the snow, in the freezing cold on Christmas Eve and never came back for them. The mom had a drug problem. The girl was put into foster care and came to me. And I didn't know what to do for her, mm -hmm. but I remembered what I felt like when I was being bullied in school. And so I just took that little girl and held her every single day, told her I loved her, you know, just tried to comfort her. And that girl in five months gained four grade levels. She was not learning disabled. Tell they had love. labeled her learning disabled. The truth was she had been traumatized. And I believe a lot of the children that receive the label of learning disability are kids in trauma. Let's face it, we have a lot of divorce going on and it affects the children. I'm not here to Is be- Is that the first thing you look for? Uh, it, it would be, yes, mm -hmm. it would be, because I found the majority of children that are labeled with the learning disability, there is a trauma going on somewhere in their life. And it's not to beat up parents or even if you have a crisis at home, mm -hmm. but take the time to address it with their chi your children because so perfect love cast out. It sure it does. It cast out fear, cast out uncertainty, insecurity, everything. And so the number one thing you have on your side, of course, is God and the love of mm -hmm. God inside of you toward that child. Now, uh, dyslexia, I think we're familiar with that. What are some of the others that have really been researched and, and categorized? Well, ADHD would be mm -hmm. the, the biggest buzz term that's out there, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Mm -hmm. And these are just kids that are so hyper they can't sit still. There are natural remedies such as peppermint oil on a cotton ball can bring one of those kids way down. And there are certain scents that encourage learning, like peppermint oil. Other scents, like the wonderful pasta you just cooked, if you cook that next to an ADHD child, it shuts down their learning because all of a sudden the stomach takes over and says, it's time to eat. What are we <laughs> eating? And honestly, it shuts down. So if you can keep the child away from the cooking area while you are teaching them, that helps, or helping them with homework. Maybe I could uh, <laughs> be a better interviewer if we didn't cook first. <laughs> uh, talking to Susan Eves, we're gonna get her website up there, and uh, please take note of it, because as I said at the top of the show, there might not be anybody in your family uh, with anything we're talking about, but in your life experience, you might run onto someone and the little red flag will go up. Well, you'll be able to hand them this uh, website. This is rich, rich, rich. Uh, it is a, uh, it's not really a workbook, but it offers all kinds of information uh, for uh, overcoming learning disabilities. And this book is for anybody, right? The, the I Am book, yes. It's who we are in Christ and who God is to us. And let me tell you something, whatever was wrong with your brain, this, this, is, this took a lot of work. This took going through the scripture line upon line upon line. Uh, she's done the work for you. Let me tell you, some of these authors, they do so much work. All you have to do is get their book because they've done the work for you. And uh, these are uh, CDs? Yes, on overcoming learning now, disabilities. Um, through that website, you can get the book, this and this, and you can get the information on the prices and all, but you can get this one separately, right? Yes, you can. Yeah, the I Am book I used with my own children because my both children were labeled learning disabled. And I was sensitive enough to realize I was going, I'd been through a divorce. Mm -hmm. And so it traumatizes the kids. Absolutely. You know, it just trauma, it's a fact. And I had to, my children were both actually clinically learning disabled. My son had visual perception problems, real bad, uh, thick, thick glasses. And we took scriptures on vision, eyes, sight. And do you know that boy received perfect healing of his eyes within about a year. My daughter was also learning disabled, couldn't read till the age of 10. I took her through that program that I'd used before my children were born. And my daughter graduated valedictorian of her high school wow. at 15 and went on. By the time she finished college, she had received eight grants and scholarships. Wow. Yeah. That is, that is <laughs> impressive. Um, 
Now, you are an educator. Yes, you, that's you my background. You are educated uh -huh. and all. And so you, you know the, the nuts and bolts of, of what we can learn from, from our uh, secular research and all, but you incorporate the scripture in it and you incorporate uh, certain um, things that have been discovered to help them learn, like the right kind of music. Uh, oh, absolutely. How, absolutely. How is that used? Well, classical music will encourage learning. Mozart, Bach, Beethoven. Not rap. Rap will shut it down. Rap will make you crazy. It will hinder, it will hinder. Hard rock music will hinder. Even video games in the background, as ch you have to turn all of that stuff off with an ADHD child, if they are indeed ADHD, shut the windows because a lawnmower, motorcycle, kids outside, they can't rem remember or, or concentrate on which thing is the most important. So keep the noise volume all the way down. But is it is it kind of nice if, if in the background you have some, some classical music going? Well, that will actually increase their ability to learn and their retention and memory skills will increase just as a result of classical music. And you know, most of the classical music was written for the church. Yes. Almost every bit of it. Um, are there signs that you can recognize maybe of sexual abuse? There are, there are. Um, children who seem to have too much of a knowledge of sex before an appropriate age. Mm -hmm. um, bedwetting, if a child has, you know, been potty trained and all of a sudden seven, eight, nine, they're wetting their bed again or they're, they're learning, their ability to learn has shut down like mine did in seventh grade. Now that was not sexual abuse, it was another thing. But I would, I would definitely look there. Um, very, very important to have contact with the kids. And kids open up the most at night. When they're going to bed and you lay down next to them, that's when a lot of things come out. We don't want to freak parents out that, mm -hmm. oh my God, my child's having problems, Boy, so this must tough. be. Yeah. But at least be open to uh -huh. hear what God wants to say to you through the children. Uh, you also mentioned <coughs> cyberbullying. You know, when I was growing up, we didn't have cyber. <laughs> and I don't remember a lot of bullying. Uh, I think it was a time in America when people were calmer and they weren't so mean. And because when you turn on the TV today, it's constant arguing, even supposed legitimate news shows, they're <coughs> arguing, screaming at each other. Um, but everything that you can read in the news, there, bullying is a huge, huge problem. And so often you hear and read the stories of where parents have gone to the educators and they do nothing. That's correct. And see, in, in my day, because I had grown up being bullied during that um, court case in junior high, I had a purple passion against anyone being bullied at zero tolerance. So in my classroom, when I dealt with children, bullying was dealt with severely, quickly, and after the first or second time, it was not even an issue anymore. The thing Where is- Where could we get more teachers like you in our classrooms? Uh, you have to pay them more, I think, <laughs> because they have to support their families. Uh -huh. But um, with bullying, the number one thing to shut bullying down, make the bully accountable for his or her actions. Make that bully sit in the place of the one they are bullying. Make them go online, see video stories of kids that have taken their life, and then write a report and have to give an oral report to the classroom. Seal it, let them be in the shoes of the person they are bullying, and that will change it. Nobody has consequences right. for their actions, and if they did, we would see it come down a great deal. But also another suggestion is homeschooling. I know a lot of parents don't feel qualified to homeschool. It is a lot I homeschool for the first seven years, my own children. But you know there is a K12.com program now that will do all the work for you. And so I would recommend it. If, if you yeah. can't shut the bullying down, remove the child from that environment. It's such a dangerous thing. Kids taking their lives at seven, eight, nine years old because they don't see a way out. Yeah, and I think, I think your method's very good. You know, turn the tables on, on them in love to help them uh, turn. I, I see I could do 10 shows with you right now, so we're gonna have to move along. Uh, for kids with autism, 
I'm telling you, the latest statistics I've heard, is it's really slightly more than one in a hundred kids are diagnosed autistic. There's something out there that's causing this. But uh, this is something also where you say music is very important. My daughter grew up to be a professional musician, and she was always in motion. She would have mm -hmm. been ADHD label, mm -hmm. always in motion. But she would heard sounds that I wasn't hearing as a parent. That's a clue also. Get your child, figure yeah. out what gifts. Set audio. That, and I'll tell you what, now as a music teacher, she has a music studio, she works with autistic children and she has seen some of these children gain so much. Parents thank her because their children are communicating with them and it opens up another realm to a child that has autism or, or other learning challenges. Yeah, you know, every TV show I've had, I've always had a harp on it. My daughter's a professional harpist and uh, it was just kind of a, you know, a, a signature piece. However, <clears throat> there's plenty of uh, research to say that music helps you, period. I think every child should have music and sports, besides all of the other academic things they deal with. Uh, music helps you with math. There, there's, there's so many. It's, you it develops the math and science part of the brain. Certain part of the yes. brain, yeah. And I encourage uh, music lessons, even if they don't want to. <laughs> um, remember who the parent is, and that they, they can have a few years of, of music, and an understanding of it, it's going to help them in every part of their life. Oh, music just opens up so many doors and brings them down. When a child is hyper, if you put classical music on, it'll bring them down. Mm -hmm. You have a hyper child in a rock environment, mm -hmm. you're going to go the other way. My daughter uh, made some recordings with her harp, and one of them was called Lullabies for Little Ones, and it worked. You could, you could put that, that uh, CD, that tape on, and it would work immediately. Well, I didn't get to everything I wanted to, but uh, we are out of time. You've got to come back because uh, we never did really get into the part about where you incorporate the scripture. Uh, so you will come back, right? I will. Thank you I, for I, having me. I thank me. you for coming and thankful that you're uh, continuing to make progress because uh, she still has some residual effects from that horrible accident. But the Lord's brought you a long way and he's going to take you all the way through. And uh, so she will come back because there's a lot more to deal with on this. But I uh, appreciate that you watched. I, I have a sense that you really learned a lot from this lady. And there's a lot more to learn. But uh, keep your eyes and ears open for things that you can learn that maybe help somebody else down the road. And join me next time. Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 